Well, again, we're back for another deep dive into one of those great, iconic jazz drum beats. And this time it's Un Poco Loco. <laughs> It's not hard to transcribe. Okay, now to help us analyze this piece is the coolest cat in town, Natasha. All right, so you can see there is a mambo-like pattern here, but it's not really like any mambo anybody ever saw before. Uh, it's a pattern of five, then another same pattern of five repeated, and then a pattern of six, and that adds up to 16 eighth notes which covers the two bars of this pattern. Now, how did Max come up with this pattern? Or did he come up with it? So Natasha here reminds me, there were three takes of Un Poco Loco. And the legend goes that in the first take, Max is playing the tune for the first time, and he just plays a mambo. And you can hear that on the recording. And then Bud Powell says, look, I broke my neck writing this incredible tune. Is that the best you can do? You just play a mambo? You're the great Max Roach. So Max Roach turns around and plays this beat that he just invented. And that's what ends up on take two and then on take three. Now, the rest of us have to go home and practice it. Max invents it on the spot and in minutes, it's one of the great recordings of all time. Now, he did struggle a little with it. Take two, if you listen to it, he makes several little mistakes. Take three is pretty darn clean. So it's pretty obvious the cowbells are probably being played with a double stroke with the right hand. And for the five patterns, uh, it's pretty obvious how to fill in those three hits with alternating strokes. That leaves you with the four strokes at the end. And if you just play them alternating, left, right, left, right, that's not going to work because your next double stroke is with that same right hand on the cowbell. That means you, you've got to have a double stroke in there somewhere. Well, there's three options. Option number one. Keep alternating and just do a double stroke at the end. That turns the four hits into a left hand paradiddle. Option number two, play another double with the right in the middle. And the third option is to play that double right away with the left hand. That's option number three. So there's a really cool video on the web by a guy named Chris Smith. And he suggests option number two. That way, the right hand just keeps playing doubles. And you can do these cool figures um, where the, uh, the right hand moves those the extra double to various places. Uh, so, very cool. A lot of options there. Well, there's an amazing video by Spyro Drums 917 You should check out his videos, in which he does a deep dive into Max Roach, and he suggests option one. And his justification is pretty compelling. He finds a whole bunch of instances where Max Roach plays this 5-5-6 five, five, pattern in his solos around the drums, not just as the Un Poco Loco beat. And for those instances that he finds, like in the Clifford Brown recordings um, and later, option number one sticking makes sense. So from this point on, we're going to use option number one.
there's still a few details other than just this beat that we should take care of. All right, now, if you transcribe that rhythm, then you find something interesting. It's also a 5-5-6 five, five, pattern. Now, these 5-5-6 five, five, patterns are an example of something that jazz musicians do a lot, which is playing a figure across the bar line. In fact, that's what happens in the, the second pattern of five actually straddles the two bars. Un poco loco also has a bridge. And for the bridge, Max does a simple pattern called a tumbao. And so if you don't know what the tumbao is, it's a pattern that is commonly played in Afro-Cuban music by the bass player and the drummer, if he's kind of hip, will play that on the bass drum. I'm, when I play it later, I'm going to play it the way Max Roach did on the snare drum, and I'm also going to play it with my bass drum. I'm going to double the two. There's also an interlude that leads into sort of an extended uh, vamp section. Let's listen to the interlude. That interlude also has a 5-5-6 five, five, pattern in it. And if you didn't hear it, rewind and see if you can find it. So I went home, I transcribed. It's all the stuff we just said. So then next practice, I'm ready to go. We start playing. It's going pretty good. And then I, it doesn't take me long to realize I've got more practicing to do. Why? Because every time I wanted to play a little fill, I play a little fill. Maybe I'd end a cymbal crash on beat one. How do I get back into the beat in the middle of the beat? I'm fine if I'm starting the beat on, on beat one, but it's weird enough that how do I jump in in the middle of a five or something? I couldn't do it. Even Max on take three, which is pretty clean, you hear him have that same trouble in a couple of spots where he plays a little fill and then, and then you can tell he's just keeping some sort of time for the next two bars for the cycle to come around again. Well, luckily on Un Poco Loco, it's actually not that hard to learn how to jump in and out of the beat if you know one trick. So I'm going to show you that trick, and I'm going to show you a couple of other tricks that you can do to spice up the Un Poco Loco and fill around it and get real confident with it. So the first trick is a byproduct of us choosing sticking pattern number one. That's that double stroke with the left hand at the very end. If we play, move that to the tom-tom, then it's like we're playing the typical conga pattern on four and. A couple of really easy tricks. Uh, one of them you probably figure out on your own, and that is um, when that right hand moves to the snare drum, there's a couple spots where it's natural to hit a rim shot instead, like the end of two in measure one and the end of three in measure two. Another really easy thing you can do, but you have to kind of remind yourself to do it, is um, when you play a fill, instead of doing the natural thing and crashing something, like the cymbal on beat one, go right back to the cowbell on beat one, and then you can jump. You're right in the beat already. All right. Um, now... What about how to get back into the middle of the beat? The trick is to come back in to the cowbell on the and of three. So it goes and four on the cowbell. Now the way to practice this is to like trade fours with yourself, play the beat for a while, play a solo, crash on beat one, come back on the and of three on the cowbell and cycle it around again.
The last little detail is how you're going to set up the cowbell. All right, first of all, you got to get a decent sounding cowbell because this cowbell is going to get hit a lot of times during the tune. Next, you want to set this cowbell up so that it is right next to the snare drum and almost level with it. Now, why? Because we're used to just sort of clamping the cowbell anywhere so it's not in our way. But this time, we're playing the cowbell constantly and we're filling and it's fast and, and we're going to be jumping. And, and, and if you get the cowbell, you know, up like this or something, you're going to jam your finger into it like I did here. So you, you want to put it in the most convenient spot. Now, sometimes the typical cowbell clamp doesn't give you that many options. That's why I really like this thing, the LP Claw. This thing is amazing. So I'm going to introduce you to the pianist and the bass player. That's Dave Bass and Kerry Kashiwagi. They were kind enough to make a recording of this piece without me playing so that I could make this video. Uh, and their sort of music minus one, un poco loco uh, thing that I'm going to be playing to, I'm making that available as well, and there's a link to it in the description on the video if you want to play along to it and practice it yourself. <laughs> What's an un poco loco sighting? What I mean by a sighting is any instance of that un poco loco 556 five, pattern contemporary or roughly contemporary with the time that Max Roach supposedly invented this piece. So why does this interest me? It interests me because after I played it and got into it, I was wondering, did he really just invent this on that day? All right, I've already introduced you to Spyro Drums 917. He is the godfather of un poco loco sightings. My first sighting is from 1953. And this is the Bud Powell Trio live at Birdland. George Vivier on bass and Art Taylor on the drums. <laughs> Now, how'd that sound to you? It sounded a little off to me. It wasn't exactly Max's pattern. It was kind of close. The first two doubles were about in the right spot, but that third one was pushed all the way over to be four. And to me, that makes a huge difference because it's actually not a 5-5-6 five, five, pattern anymore. 
So I'm a little disappointed, um, and I'm not even sure it counts as a sighting. Now, my next sighting, however, is a real one. This is from May 15th, 1953. Does that date ring a bell to any of you big jazz fans? If not, it should, because it was the date of the famous Massey Hall concert. That had Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Bud Powell, Max Roach, Charlie Mingus. And it was recorded as one of the great live recordings of all time. They don't play Un Poco Loco in that concert. However, I don't know why nobody ever noticed this before. <laughs> That got me to thinking, maybe this beat comes from 52nd Street Theme. All right, what's 52nd Street Theme? That's a tune written by Thelonious Monk, recorded over and over again during the bebop era. So I went back and started all my records and CDs, and then all over YouTube, every instance of 52nd Street Theme I could find, listening to them, that finding any example of that tune prior to the Mpoko Loka recording session to see if the Mpoko Loka beat popped up on any of them. And I came up empty. So until somebody finds some evidence to the contrary, it seems like Max came up with that beat that day, just right out of his hat. All right, so if any of you have Mpoko Loka sightings you would like to share, please do so in the comment section, uh, preferably from that period, see if we can continue to unravel this uh, great moment in jazz history. And if you'd like to practice un poco loco yourself to the Dave Bass Trio, then the music minus one that you just heard, uh, there's a link to it in the description of the video. And watch for the upcoming Dave Bass Trio CD in which we do the whole thing and throw in a few surprises.